Please, could you review Stella Wildcard? And yeah, I can, but we have some players who've actually played it in tournaments, so I can do one better, even make a deck tech video. Now the preferred method I like to use is use data statistics from tournaments to get an understanding of what cards in the deck list have been performing good and vice versa. The problem here is that we only have four entries so far, it's just a new commander, we don't know much yet in that area. But we can still talk about the core concept, the go-to thing your deck is going to do with the Stella Lee wildcard. And that is to create an infinite loop with her activated ability. So her first ability reads, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, exile the top card of your library until end of turn, you may play that card. We will get back to that ability later. But the activated ability is, tap her, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. Activate only if you cast three or more spells this turn. It's kind of important to just remember that you have to cast three or more spells to be able to activate that, which, if I'm gonna be honest, makes it a little bit tricky to actually get that... Uh, ability always activatable. The first ability, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, that will regularly happen quite easy, like you cast an rock and then you cast something more. But nonetheless, if you've cast three spells this turn and Dramatic Versal, let's say that's the third one, you can tap Stella Wild card to make a copy of Dramatic Reversal. This would make infinite mana together with all your rocks and uh, infinite storm. But if you have something like Archmay Emeratius, Magecraft, which gives you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. This means that even though you're making a copy, you're still creating a card draw. And Storm Kiln Artist works pretty much the same. This will make infinite treasures and make Storm Kiln Artist infinite infinite. But there's lots of other optional variants to Dramatic Reversal that is actually better, a little bit stranger. This is Grulin Wisp something, target creature becomes blue until end of turn, untap that creature and draw a card. So this is going to untap Stella Lee wild card so you can activate her again to create a new copy of that weird blue instant and draw a card in the process. This is going to draw out your entire library. In other words, you have a one card combo here, but there are more options. You have Twitch, tap or untap target artifact, creature or land, draw a card. So another one card combo with your commander to draw out your entire deck list. We have refocus, two mana, instant, untap target creature, draw a card. And there are more ways you could basically sculpt this concept together. So here we have Tidal Boar, instant, two mana, you may return an island you control to an owner's hand instead of paying its mana cost, which could actually be good, because if you're going to win, if you just need to cast that third spell somehow, Tidal Boar could be free to cast. And it reads, tap or untap target creature. Now it will only work if you also have Archmay Emeratius, because you need to have that card draw trigger from that Magecraft ability. Otherwise you're just sitting there and untapping and tapping this forever. Now red and blue have a problem. They don't have that many efficient tutors. They don't have demonic tutor, vamp tutor. And if you're looking at green, green has a lot of creature tutors. But you have some. Spellseeker. Spellseeker can find refocus. Spellseeker can find dramatic reversal, even though you're probably gonna find refocus uh, most of the case. But now I would actually like to showcase some statistics. So here we have a total dex, you can see total dex 17,797 and I have 539 tournament and decks that have entered into tournaments with Dockside, Isset, Colors, Spellseeker and Underworld Bridge all inside their deck list. Basically excluding everything that is an Isid here. And you can see that the win rate is 22.31. However, if we do a tweak, we move Spellseeker up to the exclusion. So now we are only including Dockside, Isid, Colors and Underworld Breach. And we're excluding all decks that contain Spellseeker. Suddenly we have 3842 decks that are 
basically playing this and the win rate is 24.59. This is not looking into specifically Stellar, she's actually in the calculation here as well, though those four tournament entries that she had, but still, as you can see, it seems to be the better choice of not playing Spell Seeker inside your deck list. And the reason is actually quite simple. I will show it to you once more. You have this one, you have this one, you do have this one, a little bit weird. You have this one, and you have this one. You see, you have so many different variations of one card combos with your commander that you don't really need that many tutors. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't play Spellseeker. I'm just showcasing some statistics that Spellseeker in general aren't performing that good. And you do have a good argument that you don't need it. If you have enough card draw in general, you are going to eventually draw into the key card that you need to win the game. The more one card combos you have, the less tutors you need. That means that you should probably focus more on the better alternative tutors. For example, Merchant Scroll, search your library for a blue instant card, reveal that card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. This can find dramatic reversal, it can find a refocus, it can find pretty much every one of those instant alternatives you have to win the game with your commander. So Merchant Scroll costs two mana instead of three, much better. But also, this is a card that you could actually make a copy of with your commander. Most of the case, you won't really need to make a copy of Merchant Scroll, but still, you could. And that could be important because maybe you need to remove a hate beer and find a combo piece, so you could cast Merchant Scroll, find a Cyclonic Rift, and find Dramatic Reversal or Refocus depending on. And that's good, that means that with your Merchant Scroll and the synergy with your commander you could find your combo as well as interaction at the same time. Pact of Negation could be a great card to find with Merchant Scroll on the same turn you're trying to win the game. I would also like to highlight Muddle the Mixture. Now, counter target instant sorcerer spell for 2 blue mana is not great. Tutor for a card on CMC2 for free mana is also not that great, but it's a little bit of a Swiss army knife. It is just more options compared to a spell seeker. Once again, I'm not telling you to play Muddle the Mixture or play spell seeker, vice versa, including it or not including it. I'm just giving you some information to consider how you should approach it if you're going to include it or not. One specific case I actually have for Muddle the Mixture is that you can find Underworld Breach with it. And that is definitely something worthy to consider. Because, once again, it's very easy to tutor for those instant sorceries in general for blue, but finding enchantments and finding other things could be a little bit more tricky. And once again, you don't really need to tutor for those one card combos that I showcased earlier, but sometimes you really need to tutor for that Underworld Breach. Before we proceed and talk more about Underworld Breach, I would like to mention these two tutors as well. They are actually quite good inside this deck. Search your library for an instant or sorcerer card, reveal at that card, shuffle your library and put it on top. You have two versions, one in sorcerer speed and one in instant speed. I think you should play both. I think we should read the first ability on Stella Lee Wild Card once more. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, exile the top card of your library and you may play it this turn. So let's say that you're casting Mystical Tutor as your first spell this turn, and then you go Arcane Signet, uh, Chromox, Lightning Bolt, or whatever. You cast a secondary spell. You're now going to exile whatever you searched for with these cards here. So you search up your combo, and now you exile your combo, and now you cast your combo as the third spell. So I think that Mystical Tutor and Personal Tutor are perfect fits for this specific commander, as you're getting them directly accessible quite easy with her first ability and you can start copying the combo piece that you're finding with these instantly. And if we compare these to Spellseeker, this is just one blue while Spellseeker is free mana. So it's a little bit easier to actually set this up with these cards because the mana cost is just lower. And that is important because you're going to need mana left over to cast your counter spells to protect you when you're trying to win the game. But now, as we've already talked a tiny bit about Underworld Breach, and we're starting to get into the concept of how are we winning this match, I think this is the key part to actually mention. We are going to have Underworld Breach, Lines of Diamond and Brain Freeze as an auto-include inside this decklist. 
The cards are absolutely amazing and Lion's Eye Diamond is very good of making sure to get those secondary spell for turn and third spell per turn achieved. So once you have basically achieved these cards, maybe you've drawn out your entire library, you can cast Underworld Breach, you can play Lion's Eye Diamond and you can sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond putting all the cards you have inside your entire deck and the entire hand into your graveyard. Uh, yeah. You don't actually need to do that. You can just sit and cast a few spells here and there until you basically build something up. Once you have your entire deck in your hand, you could basically do whatever you want. But this is a very good, clean go-to combo because it's already good on its own. Like if you don't have access to your commander, let's say there's a cursed totem in play or something that is preventing you from drawing cards, then winning with your commander could be tricky. So having this as an alternative is just already great. And you don't actually need more to win the match than these. What you're going to do is basically mill out all of your opponents and then try to not mill out yourself too much. So when you're executing the combo where you're drawing your entire deck list, don't deck yourself. Don't go down to zero. Stay around like 20 or something of the sort. Because a very good way to win here is to either make a copy of an Orcish Bowmaster somewhere, if you can, or cast a Wheel of Fortune post brain freezing everyone out. So you mill everyone out, cast a Wheel of Fortune, and everyone dies and you survive. You could also just mill everyone out with brain freeze past turn and they die in their upkeep. With this very clean concept, we're starting to create something very important. Only good cards inside the entire deck list. Now on surface we're playing some strange cards, like this is a very strange card, but one blue mana to draw a card is fine, it's not a dead card, it's just not something you would normally play. But it's a one card combo so it's automatically good anyways. Filling your deck with a bunch of tutors, a bunch of card drawing engines that you're basically auto including, then a bunch of various different counter spells of course, and then you're starting to basically build a deck that is just great on its own. But there's one more concept we really should talk about. The One Ring. This is a really good card overall in general. It gives you protection uh, from everything if you cast it. You lose life, but you don't really care about losing life. This is gonna be the only card that's draining your life somehow. And you're drawing a huge amount of cards with this thing. You might have heard of Minamao School of Water's Edge. One blue, tap it, untap target legendary permanent. So you can untap the one ring to have basically two one rings on the same turn. This is huge card draw. But one more thing, you can do the same thing with your commander actually, which is kind of cool. So the land have double value. It's always going to be good with your commander if you get access to your commander and if you're able to cast enough spells. It's gonna be a little bit mana intensive to actually do all of this because once again that is a land and you need one blue mana so it's basically two lands to make a secondary activation of a Stella Lee wild card. But the synergy is still there. Also we're playing blue and red so we can have a non-basic land that just taps for one blue pip won't hurt the deck in general. It's just replacing one of your islands, basically. If we would have been playing like four colors, it would maybe be a little bit tricky to fit Minamamo School of Water's Edge into the decklist because lands that just taps for one blue in a multicolor decklist could be tricky. We've talked a lot about including only good cards, cards that would only be doing good things during the entire course of the game. I did mention that we're going to win the game by basically drawing the entire decklist and then figure out some form of way to win. And some of you might be saying, huh, fast as Oracle. That is a very clean and good efficient way to win the game once you've deck, you have no library left. But this is a dead card. Now I have actually noticed that some of the decklists that among those four, one of them did have a fast as Oracle in their decklist and I wouldn't recommend that. The reason is simple, you don't need it. Underworld Breach, Lion's Diamond and Brain Freeze will do the job. And Fasa's Oracle in the end is a dead card. It doesn't actually do anything. It's easy to just say, okay, I've drawn my entire decklist. Here's a Chromox, here's a Mox Diamond, here's two blue mana, here's a Fasa's Oracle, GG's. That feels clean and simple and enjoyable. But doing the hard work will reward you more. Once again, if you have drawn out your entire deck list, you have the entire deck in your hand, you could do whatever you want. And this will do the same job in the end as a Fasas Oracle. You just need to do a little bit more effort. But that more effort is worth it because you could replace that Fasas Oracle card with a counterspell or anything that you feel is necessary. Once again, Fasas Oracle is a dead card. It doesn't do anything until the point 
where you have your entire decklist in your hand. This package will do something outside that concept, but also be the replacement for Fasas Oracle once you win the match. Another word to mention I did actually forget to say is that Dramatic Reversal together with Stella Lee Wild Card together with the One Ring will also draw out your entire decklist. So as a wrap up of this video I would like to summarize things like this. We're looking at a two color commander which is usually problematic, you kind of want to be on three. We have a lot of statistics saying that the more colors you have on your color identity the better. However I've noticed that Isset is actually getting a very good result in general. There's a lot of Isset commanders with some decent win rate overall. And I think that that's because Red have been gaining a lot of upgrades in the versions of Doxed Extortionists and Anvil Breeds and such. But we're also looking at a commander with a bunch of different variations of one card combos, solving the big problem of Isset where you need to, they are not good at tutoring for their cards. But Isset doesn't really usually need tutors as just with enormous amount of card draw, which they are good at, they naturally draw into their one card combos instead. So I truly think that this is going to be a, yeah, pretty okay, decent commander that could win some games here and there. She also has a value engine on her, like whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you basically kinda draw a card, kinda. If you flip into a counter spell, that's a little bit sad for you. But I would like to mention that if you flip into lands, you can actually play those. Regardless, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video or got some cool inspiration to your deck building process at the very least. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next one.